Great, great, great. At this time, I would like to introduce our second speaker of the evening, Dr. Tiziana Stella. Shortly before World War II, an American journalist named Clarence Streit proposed that the 15 most advanced democracies of the time form a union that would be so powerful, Hitler would not dare attack it, thus preventing World War II. He reasoned that over time, over nations could join union, which would eventually lead to world federation. Dr. Tiziana Stella is the executive director of the Stripe Council, carrying on the work of Clarence Stripe. This evening, she will present his model, Union Through Democracy, as well as discuss how it might be updated to fit our current political reality. Dr. Stella will be speaking for 40 minutes, and then we will open it up for questions for additional 15 to 20 minutes. In order to ask a question, as previously, like previously, you would need to write in the chat window. Please start your question with a question mark so we can easily identify questions for the speaker. When Dr. Stella is done with her presentation, I will be asking questions you have posted. Dr. Stella, Donna will keep time for us today and we'll jump in on the halfway mark to let you know. And again, at the five minute mark left in your presentation. Okay? Thank you, yes. Great, Dr. Stella, you now have the floor. Okay, so let's start. First of all, thank you for inviting me to this event. Uh, I'm very glad to talk about another options for World Federation as we look for possibilities. And um, the idea that I will be talking about is the idea of starting with the nucleus of democracies that are united in a federation. So usually the idea uh, is attributed to Clarence Stride because he was the one that was most successful uh, in uh, uh, promoting and the story and movement in support of that. But it actually goes back uh, 100 years or more, actually the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, so it's always been there as an alternative way of reaching the same goal. And it has certain logic, certain dynamics that are a little bit different from other uh, models. Uh, but in terms of the end goal, in terms of what we're looking for is the same. So uh, let me start sharing my screen um, and hopefully we can uh, uh, go through all of it. Otherwise I'm gonna have to cut some slides. Mm, I'm trying to start. Uh, can you guys see my? We see that you're sharing your screen, but we don't see the slides themselves yet. Oh, you don't see the slides? No. Oh, wait. No, not yet. Uh, Are what? you using PowerPoint? Yeah, here it is. Okay. Great. Yes. Um, let me go. Okay, can you now see my screen? Yes. All right, perfect. So uh, here's a title, uh, Union Through Democracy as a, one of the models for World Federation. So uh, the idea of a nucleus World Federation, the goal, as any other model of federation, is how to curb international anarchy. So in the idea of uh, the models uh, of the nucleus, the idea would be to have a nucleus of world federation uh, that works together with a broader and uh, universal cooperation. Originally, it was conceived as a way to reinforce the league. And then 
it, it also was applied later on as another uh, way to uh, reinforce the United Nations. Uh, the difference between uh, other models is that the emphasis is on starting now. And I will go later into why that's important in the logic. Uh, originally, the, uh, one of the ideas that more common was that, and it was in World War I, that uh, once the league was set, then it was possible to reform, to move toward federation. So there was this organic uh, process in which the league could be reformed and eventually uh, we could move to uh, World Federation. And uh, here is uh, the, one of the traditional ways of understanding misconcept, uh, misconception about how the plan <clears throat> that Stride and others proposed there will be like a federal union of democracies along the United Nations, but it was more instead like this. So Stride was uh, not the first one, but it was the most successful at promoting this idea. Also because he studied it in more in depth and it uh, used some of the concepts that are actually used today uh, to analyze uh, you know, intersystemic crisis and uh, collapsing failure. Uh, an important thing is that Stride did not write a book in 1939. So most people think, well, um, it was a way to uh, fight autocracies, not on the contrary. It was a way, uh, Stride saw that there was uh, this crisis of world organization with the league being unable to uh, prevent uh, the um, collapse, the 1929 collapse, and then how this affected democracy. So for him, it was a way to see how democracy and world organization were actually um, interacting with each other and uh, strengthening democracy and strengthening world organization uh, went together. Um, so we will go later. Uh, these are the key ideas that I will be exploring. Uh, so the idea goes back to Hamilton Holt before World War I. Um, and uh, in Stride, the system approach becomes predominant. It becomes also a full federalist theory of international relations. It is a strategy to achieve world federation. And uh, his uh, main argument uh, was that the most difficult part is how to start, to start and failure to start means opening on irreversible path dependencies. So the, the delay will create potentially irreversible path dependencies away from the goal. The key for Strat was getting to enough to alter permanently international anarchy and to do as soon as possible. Uh, and the strategy was, uh, we will go into it later, uh, to have uh, sufficient critical mass of power together with a different unit of government and the international level. So by these two changes, it thought that, that it would be possible to gain momentum cause a chain reaction. So to alter the whole system dynamics of international relations. So th this system approach is very important to stride. Um, and uh, I think it does uh, resonate very well with some of the analysis that we are seeing today among people that are looking at how to escape this uh, potential collapse of things. And here is the system analysis. Okay. So um, let me take away this screen. So. We're talking today of inter-systemic cascading failures, uh, and this was precisely the way that Stride also understood the role of starting with a nucleus world federation, because there was this vicious cycle between weak world organization, backsliding on democracy, and then the rise of uh, global catastrophic risk collapse, World War II, and today will be World War III or um, other forms of collapse. So, and these are mainstream concepts today. So it was a sort of a vanguard analysis and tool at the time. Um, and we will see what are the key um, conceptual points of this analysis, especially tipping points, chain reaction, foreclosing solutions. 
So this is one, just one example of what is being done today in terms of understanding how this inter intersystemic cascading classes affect each other. So, and uh, how it is by altering one part of the system, the whole system is altered. This is another example, cascading global climate failure. Uh, and uh, so there, the idea is that there are vicious cycles that as they keep growing, uh, the risks grow and having in effect in world organization brings to backsliding democracy, cascading failures, escalations of existential catastrophe. So we by now have analyzed, uh, uh, no, we um, analyzed. Um, excuse, excuse me, Tiziana, there is a request from the audience if you can speak closer to the microphone so oh, they can sure. hear you better. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me better now? Yes, thank you. All right, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, let me know. All right, so let me go back. Uh, so I was saying that what I'm, what is represented here is not my analysis. I took this from somewhere else, but to show that actually this is a common uh, emerging view of things, system analysis. Uh, we know that as time goes, solutions become less possible, but uh, there are a lot of questions and we that are unanswered. And I'm gonna argue here that um, this idea of starting the nucleus probably does uh, fit well the situation that we have today. So strike analysis was that as the crisis of world organization was growing, democracy was also backsliding and there was this um, vicious circle. So what we know today because of new analysis that has emerged is that the problems are not getting to enough, fixes that backfire, institutions that get locked in, system pathologies, global cascading failures, and then we come to a point of rupture. And this point of rupture can lead either to collapse or to a new equilibrium. To get to this new equilibrium, we need certain kind of institutions that are flexible, adaptive, but also uh, starting as soon as possible. So some aspects of this um, are common to all federalist analysis. This, these ideas that now are becoming more and more part of today's way of looking at things, but all of them were the foundation of are the foundation of the nucleus approach. So we know about fixes that backfires. There are symptoms of the problem. There are quick fixes. Uh, we do not look at the root causes of the problems. This creates delay. And uh, this also brings to uh, lower chances of funding a, a real solution. So as time moves on. So the, this is the concept of the chain reaction domin, uh, domino effect that Stride and those supporting this uh, other model uh, look into very much as the foundation of the idea. One of the concepts was the World Federation via reform was also a fix that backfire because it was based um, in this model, um, the wrong order of priorities, it never starts, so it can never get to enough. So if we want to um, um, compare traditional ways of uh, models of World Federation, this is the first one that sees traditional and also official because it was considered officially the official choice between universal cooperation or World Federation. So universality at the start. The problem with this, I will explain later, is that in moving to league to federation, uh, at least in the case of uh, the interwar, uh, is, this did not work. In fact, this model collapsed at that point. So the idea of creating a union of democracies as a nucleus of world federation um, emphasized the democracies as to be at the start, it has to be both, criteria for membership and, and the method of union. 
and that the choice is, uh, there is a third choice, universal cooperation with a nucleus of world organization. Um, and in this way, we can get the, the, the ball moving. So in terms of rearranging priorities and uh, what Stride could observe at the leagues was, and so his model was that, and he was in World War I, he believed that joining the world would create, um, by setting a league would bring peace and the spread of national democracies. And then eventually there would be United Federation. But instead, the observation as a journalist at the League of Nations, so day after day after day for 10 years, you could notice the dynamic of this system uh, was instead that the World League brought to a first you know, um, polycrisis of 1929, then eventually brought backsliding collapse. Uh, of young democracies into autocracies, and then eventually to World War II. Uh, you also observe that there, there are windows of opportunities that need to be taken at the time as they emerge, and they are not this, the, this configuration is not always optimal, but there are moments in history where there is an opportunity. And by not taking that opportunity, it foreclose uh, a bunch of options. Uh, so this, for example, is the uh, map of 1917, when the idea of um, <clears throat> a union of democracies as the foundation of World Federation was very, very popular. Um, and um, here, um, so here is a representation of when with why it's important to act as soon as possible because uh, we always look at what is feasible uh, and then eventually with time, but it's not enough, is the effectiveness of these solutions become less and less. And that we need to gain change system, move to a different system if we want to go come back from collapse. Um, and this speaks about the had dependency and uh, that the idea that there is no way back. So the sooner we act, the better, because we preclude other options. Um, I took this, of course, at the end of this, I took this slide, but it does represent very well, you know, where we are, we're moving toward like instability. And if we do not make enough change, which is the, li the line of change, we might end up in another area that is, would be another st stable area, but at the same time, stability with disintegration, loss of societal cohesion, and it would be very hard to come out of that because of this intersystemic um, dynamics. So, um, how do we get to renew the future, which would not be an optimal solution as it could have been in the past, uh, but it will be stable enough to prevent collapse. So the idea of tipping points uh, um, is the idea that um, at the beginning, the effort uh, might be the most effort uh, in terms of changing or change or achieving change, but once we achieve this point, it, it becomes easier. This, this is more snowball effect. We talk about also tipping points in negative ways when we talk about the climate tipping point and so on. But there is also a way to reverse the same logic and turn it toward positive. So without a systemic change, we will not be able to, uh, to alter, we will reach collapse and uh, the effectiveness of the fixes that backfire will become less and less. So how do we gain enough energy to move away from here to get to renewal? So this is a representation instead of how we can use the same curve in a positive way and what is needed and why the nucleus uh, is really a strategy to reverse 
toward the positive, the idea of tipping points. Um, so uh, in order for it has to sufficiently alter a part of a system so that the whole system is altered. And um, here I'm gonna try to explain. The concept of starting a chain reaction uh, start based um, on the idea of critical mass and the idea of unit of government so that uh, we could permanently alter international anarchy. So the concept that he used was actually a concept that is very common in a, a system, uh, in natural system, the idea of kinetic energy, the idea that uh, when uh, things are positioned in a different way, they can release force and they can change the dynamic of the system. The democracies were not united and therefore they had a lot of potential energy. They were and uh, by uniting in a union, this energy could be released with maximum power in order to change international anarchy as soon as possible and enough to prevent collapse. Uh, there is also the idea of purposiveness. So we need to know and want to do that. Uh, but again, sorry that I went too fast, but uh, anyway, so the idea that we need to kick the, to get the uh, ball moving. So uh, the nucleus, uh, the, the main idea is that you have to spark a chain reaction to permanently alter all the global dynamics of power, release this potential energy, so to be able to escape the dynamics of power um, in uh, um, of international anarchy and they escape the vicious circle of anarchy. We don't have the time to go through all this. So Dr. I Stella, just... you are halfway through your time. I have what? You are halfway through, you have 20 more oh, minutes. Oh, thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna try to go fast. So that's why I am uh, uh, gonna skip through that. He thought that starting with a few democracies was, was in critical and uh, I don't know why my computer, okay. So without going to the details, uh, the model of uh, a world federation uh, uh, through a nucleus of democracies is based on the concept of democracy in which uh, individuals are all given equal weight. And the goal is to achieve a global equality of men and that the person has to be the unit of government. So in terms of model, uh, the individual become the federator in this model and uh, a union is a democracy composed of democracy. It is a federal union at, this, at each stage and um, it operates like other democracies and the goal is individual emancipation to allow for the greatest possibility of equal individual emancipation. And uh, the other basic concept was uh, that uh, um, there are only two ways of organizing interstate relations and they either the unit of government is men or women or it is the state, the union of the league. So altering enough the international system and putting the as unit of government that the individual was the priority that strike and in this model is considered uh, more important than others. So just here is, um, okay. So uh, here is to re a re representation of, even though at the beginning, uh, the initial nucleus is small, is a federal union of, of democracies at, the, at each stage, it remains uh, a nucleus of world federation because it's a federal union of democracies until it becomes world federation. Now, uh, uh, this problem emerged um, and is an answer to the problem of interdependence and uh, closer interdependence. 
And it's this, and we are going back to idea, uh, the idea of the individual as the unit of government and the ability of individuals of uh, connecting directly in the IU relations with, without having gatekeepers. That is the basic idea. So in a situation of anarchy, uh, individuals which are these green points not really connect to each other. Uh, this is traditional view of uh, you know, federation, federal government, but in a league, again, the individuals cannot interact with each other. There are gatekeepers. Um, and uh, this is actually what happens at here. This is another level in which individual interacts, but they do not interact with that. In a federation, instead, we have all different um, way in which individual can interact across uh, different uh, spheres of government and uh, across and connect with each other. So this is a, a representation of our federation actually allows uh, all different uh, way of uh, uh, the potential of individuals to really be connected to each other in an IU relation without the keepers, therefore without having power um, dominate uh, the relation, global relations. So uh, the third option was through time, through democracy, through system change, through enough and now. Uh, often it is misconceived as a partial world federation, a non-world federation or non-inclusive um, or similar enough to Alliance of Democracies. All this, we don't have time to go into it, but these are all misconceptions of what this model is about. Um, and the way that um, transformation would happen was really um, more ingrained in the nature of things and uh, ingrained in the natural boundaries in the law of physics, the law of nature, the, and, and the individual as the federator. Sorry, I skipped that slide, but probably it's just good. So uh, how do we move from league to federation? So to a union, federal union, where there is the equality of individuals, the unit of government is uh, the individual. And to, um, so from a system of equal sovereignty of states uh, that is universal to a system of equality of individuals. So uh, for Stride, right, this was not a way to supplant the league or international cooperation, but to strengthen democracy and strengthen uh, the league or the UN. Uh, so was not was not only, but also. Uh, the choice of method is very important. Um, so by uniting uh, through the individuals, uh, I'll have to skip on some of this, but so they, this method operate, there is a synthesis of democracies, not only the criteria of membership, but also the method of union with the individual as unit of government at the core of world organization. So I was asked to explain what would be the structure of government. So it is a, it is a full uh, government. It is a, a union of democracies, made of democracies and the central government uh, will have a central government. Uh, it also will maintain independent national governments and uh, it will create by its constitution a nucleus world government with ingrained in institutionally in the constitution, the promise, the institutional promise that countries that will become democracies would be able to join. This was a huge um, uh, step because uh, it also meant that then, like in the case of uh, the war in Ukraine or the collapse of the Soviet Union, People would once they will come out of, of autocracies would not be left hanging at the other side of the tunnel, but at the other side of the tunnel, there will be something that uh, in which they will become part of uh, the, this initial nucleus of world government. Um, 
And uh, there will be common government in five fields, citizenship, uh, union defense force, uh, cost and, uh, and free economy, money, uh, postal and communication system. Uh, so we're gonna skip this uh, and uh, I'm gonna go to this. So what are we today? So today uh, the state that is still the unit of government uh, as it used to be, and as it actually is now. But with this, I'm trying to represent a little bit the idea that the state has been weakened, although the state is still what maintains uh, international anarchy, but uh, the anarchy has now become less, though we have structures of world governments, because at the level of the government, uh, at the level of the state, citizens have very uh, little um, ability to affect uh, uh, global issues, the state is weak. Uh, at the level of global governance, we do not have a state, we do not have a government, therefore there is not a direct way for uh, individuals to actually participate in the structures of uh, global governance. So what happening, what's happening today is that there is a bigger measure of anarchy, which is in this gray area that has emerged between a weak state uh, that is still able to annihilate humankind and weak uh, um, global governance, still we have problems that require money and that require participation. So this is being circumvented by um, having this idea of stakeholders that can finance the problems so we do not end uh, in uh, collapse. Uh, and also, um, there is an idea of participation through civil society, which is very good. However, it has limitations because it's not this direct relation of the individual to each other. It does not create an IU relation across the globe. And so it does not achieve the main problem that Stry was seeing as the problem of uh, IU relation extended globally, which also will be a way to uh, remove anarchy and gatekeepers. So uh, the question is, uh, how do we constrain breakdown? Uh, we know that we are at the point of rupture. There is no doubt about that. How do we get to a new equilibrium? What are the ways to which we do? And we uh, share the idea that um, the World Federation model is uh, the optimal model, but um, it is possible that precisely because today we have to be able to get to enough and, and soon as, and having adaptive structures, uh, if we cannot do this with everybody, we can still alter a part of the system, maybe not sufficiently as we could have done earlier on, uh, but alter in such a way that it might generate still uh, um, alter the, the old global system. I'm thinking specifically about the global south uh, and I'm thinking specifically in those areas where now uh, great power competition is actually competing uh, to um, get support and get um, of uh, specific um, areas uh, of the world. In the global south, there is widespread idea that um, there might be an hypocrisy on the side of democracies and uh, it is not really what they're looking for is democracy. Uh, I think that the idea that democracies are uh, so determined to keep uh, an international system and they call it, you know, the rules-based international order where equal sovereignty of states uh, is really a mistake uh, because it's undermining the possibility of reaching the level of transformation that we can have and also is undermining the possibility of uh, having a promise uh, given to those people that are not yet democracies that at the other side of the tunnel, once they're able by themselves to change their system, uh, there will be something. And there will not be at the end of that just bigger war, bigger destruction, like it has been the case in the case of Ukraine, which was another missed opportunity of the period of the collapse of the Soviet Union. And at that point, it was again, like a great opportunity to have something 
offer at the other side, but it, it did not happen. So um, in terms of model for uh, World Federation, maybe some of these uh, characteristics seems to be quite relevant today, especially given this intersystemic crisis that we're facing and the stakes in it. Thank you. Thank you, Tiziana. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> now I will be asking you questions from our audience members this evening. We will have 15 minutes for the Q&A portion. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat, starting with a question mark so we can easily spot your question. If we do not get to all of your questions, just a reminder that Tiziana will be in one of the breakout rooms where you will have an additional 30 minutes to ask your questions informally. Um, we do have a number of questions lined up, so we will begin um, at this moment. Um, the first question I have is, what does irreversible path dependencies mean? Irreversible? Irreversible path yeah. dependencies. It means that um, once you make a choice, you, you cannot go back because it means that you preclude, as time goes on, the options that were there at the time are not there anymore. So if you want, uh, to get from uh, A to B, uh, there are some, some choices that will allow you to go there. And there are some other choices that will preclude it forever. And because as time passes, um, for example, in, in, in a very concrete example, technologies become more powerful. The ability uh, of uh, destruction become uh, more powerful, and so that is what it means. Okay, was that okay, Bob? Great. Yeah. Okay, and our second. Okay, our second question: Biden and others are now having summits for democracy. What do you think can be done to move those efforts in the direction of what Strike proposed? That's. <laughs> An excellent question. That's perhaps the yeah. I what it could be done, but it's not gonna happen, is that they could put in the agenda the idea that uh, democracy uh, in uh, its true meaning uh, it becomes the uh, way to organize the international order uh, that would uh, mean uh, not keep supporting the this rules-based international order and sovereignty of states as uh, the end or solution to everything because it's obviously not the end or solution to everything and so um i do not think that the measures that are being taken though uh they are um, you know probably they're they're all big uh, fixes that backfire they're not going to change the system they're not they are exposing democracies to more criticism they are leaving open spaces for um autocracies to gain support from the global style look at india um and uh of course, if there were an option to join a union of democracies, if you become a democracy and the share uh, in the power and in the institution and the prosperity and in the more freedom of that, uh, that would tilt the balance in favor of democracy. But uh, by not doing that, it's, you know, it's competition uh, and against will not be enough change. So it's another, fix that backfire and that is a waste of time. That is my idea though. Uh, I uh, think it is uh, good that we're starting to discuss that and maybe we can make some progress. Okay, great, thank you. Could creating a powerful democratic federation threaten autocratic states push them closer together and make world war more likely? Uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, to the contrary, 
um, I think that it will uh, show that um, the method that has been used now that uh, competition to power, there is not enough power with the, with the tools and the distractions that we can uh, have today. Uh, there is not enough power that you can add to democracies and alliances that would be good enough to tilt uh, things because of nuclear weapons, because of the problems that we have today. It would actually be a, a sign that um, democracies are willing to reform themselves, but that are not seeing power, um, great power competition as the main goal. Uh, of uh, their existence in the world uh, and uh, that there is enough transformation. So I think that it would also help uh, the opposition within those democracies uh, to see that change is happening and that there is something at the end of that tunnel. It's not Ukraine again. It's not you know, the, the solution of the Soviet Union just to have a bigger war. Uh, what was in that for them at that point? Why not having more power for their autocracy? Okay, thank you. Um, another question we have the democracies these days probably would center around the US, EU, EU NATO K countries. The authorization countries would be Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, and some small global South countries. Wouldn't that look pretty much like we have today in the world over Ukraine? It hasn't been working well. Perhaps Russia and China are stronger today than in Strout's time. And then unifying without them would not constitute overwhelming strength. Um, so basically. No, go ahead, sorry. Oh. Wouldn't, wouldn't it look pretty much like we have today in the world or in Ukraine, the democracies? Uh, no, uh, because uh, it might look a little bit in terms of uh, membership. And again, uh, I, I'm not sure, uh, but um, what we are doing today is competing for uh, uh, power supremacy uh, in the idea of the nucleus, uh, the main goal would be uh, to alter the dynamics of power, not to defend state sovereignty as the main goal, the thing that needs to be defended, but uh, to change things. Uh, as I was saying earlier on, uh, I don't think that it is the same thing. At this point, we are really having a competition that is typical of power politics and that the union, the main goal, the, where the union attacks most the system is uh, uh, changes the system of so -and -so, uh, um, national sovereignty where we have nations in anarchy competing with each other. So yeah, maybe initially it can be perceived as that, but it would also change a lot of perceptions and uh, a lot of dynamics and a lot and open possibilities that are now precluded forever unless we have some kind of system change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question we have here: um, If a federation of democracies started now, how would it interact with the EU? With the EU? With the EU? Yeah. The European uh, Union? Yeah. Uh, I don't know because that, 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 that is the way the people that they would be left to the people that create uh, this uh, Federation of Democracies. So uh, I can imagine many configurations. Uh, I don't know specifically. One of the things that actually was left open by Strat very much was the idea was we need to get to that. Then at that point is actually a decision of the people that are participating in this change as to how we constitute that in which form. But um, and so there are a lot of things that were left open precisely because it is conceived in a democratic way. So it could be participating in, in different ways. Okay. 
Another question we have here is, how do you see your union getting started? Um, do you think the EU offers a good template? Well, we could start by those questions. How do you uh, see your union yeah, getting started? Yeah, I think that among the models that we have today, uh, the EU is probably the best template, though there are still a lot of problems with, with the EU. Uh, and uh, that now um, are starting to be addressed with the idea of having um, transnational parties or to having this transnational constituency, uh, as opposed to the past where parties were divided by countries. And so you create this transnational constituency. Uh, also the idea of, uh, it, although it is not strong, it is not used in the best way, the idea of uh, uh, citizens' assemblies, of uh, allowing and uh, giving citizens really more of a voice uh, where uh, in a situation where the state doesn't have much power, but so empowering the citizens. So all of those measures probably uh, would be um, replicated. Uh, it could also, in an optimal way, be deeper than the European Union. Uh, but that is, you know, a final goal or like the ideal uh, solution. Okay. Well, the, co the question continues on. Could it begin with a core grouping, say the D10 group? The D10 group is the G7 plus South Korea, India, and Australia w with the beginning uh, of the union. Uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, that grouping, um, though uh, it has a lot of, uh, um, you know, plus on the side, uh, would um, perhaps not be the best uh, configuration only. It would have to include other countries that are not, let's say, traditionally of the West, that are not traditionally powerful democracies that are of a different nature. Otherwise, there is this idea that Stride really stressed that um, it should, it was saying it should not be just only great powers. It should include like smaller countries. It should not look exclusive in its membership. So yes, democracies, but democracies that are, the, the, the composition of these democracies, uh, although it needs to reach strong power should be, um, not perceived as exclusive, not perceived as another route uh, to, uh, it, it brings back to many, um, you know, notions of a PowerPoint comp um, power competition, uh, because in a sense, the idea has been used uh, as a um, power politics tool. So, maybe better get out of that kind of uh, contextualization and uh, be more inclusive. Okay. What are the main objections to this plan and how, how would you respond to them? And well, the main objections are that um, it's impossible. <laughs> it's a typical one, it's not feasible. Uh, the main objections are that um, it would be dangerous to propose such solution. Uh, and this, these were precisely the same objections that were there in World War II and World War I. But um, as an historian, uh, one of the things that I know and I've studied that I have explored is that actually the public as it is now, and uh, as you know, there are now uh, studies that prove that, um, would not be against these solutions. Uh, it's not against, you know, equality. It's not um, again. It, it, it's in favor of peace. It's in favor. So the general answer of the public, in general, I don't know when this pro uh, if it were proposes, uh, you know, a plan, uh, is tilts toward uh, recreating the global system in this way. And I think that there would be an understanding among both, you know, the right and the left and across border that uh, actually people would gain power and would not lose power. This is by now, it's, it's more obvious than it was at the time of World War I, World War II, uh, where 
you know, this is existential anxiety, uh, this fear of collapse and everything, this crisis. And so I think that uh, by now there is so much attention on how to reform a uh, world organization that if a, if a solution like this, where there is really um, a great input from the individual, the individual is uh, the center of this new construction, uh, it probably uh, would be, um, not, uh, it, it, I mean, I, I think there will be most likely uh, a positive response is if it is well presented. Uh, um, so I think the idea among politicians is still that it is utopia, uh, but there is an utopian dream and so on. But we have seen that uh, the opposite is true. By not doing that, we get to collapse. So the, the, there are abilities now to understand the, the consequences of those choices not made and what they led to. We probably only have time for one more question, Yamale. Correct, we have time for one more question. And that is, um, why do you think that debate about the idea of world political union is so lacking today? So again, why the idea of what? Why do you think the debate about the idea of world political union is so lacking today? Oh, well, uh, there are many reasons, I think. Uh, I can mention some. One is that um, as a culture and as um, a perspective, uh, it has been uh, uh, banal forgotten mostly. So it was very popular at the beginning of the 20th century. And then as a world, those nation states became, you know, uh, the new reality after World War II, uh, there was an hostility to this idea. So um, federalists were like isolationist persona non grata. Their culture was a culture that uh, had to be diminished, has to be characterized as utopian, idealist, and all that, uh, as unconcerned with power, which is not, of course. Um, and uh, so, we have forgotten that these things existed. We have forgotten to which degree they were mainstream. So that is one cause. The other cause that I, um, I, I see is that um, other options are being proposed and uh, that are sort of supplanting this idea. And uh, those are because we are in such a need to find solutions that whichever solutions we can find that prevent catastrophe, we have sort of take them. This is one of the uh, irreversible path dependencies examples. Um, and so other uh, gatekeepers are emerging, you know, big corporations or uh, uh, these uh, stakeholders. And uh, these uh, in themselves, have uh, an interest in uh, maintaining their position of brokers. And therefore they say, well, we can solve this by doing that, or we can solve this by doing this other thing. And um, the UN per se has to sort of uh, compromise with these solutions if it has you know, to prioritize the idea of preventing disaster. And so we're sort of getting into this gray area where lack of, uh, where there are other interests and other um, paths that are uh, uh, taking place uh, without this idea being discussed. So, and I think it is a, a, you know, a dangerous state of things because we might end up in that graph where it said the Mad Max. <laughs> so that wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, okay, great. Thank you so much for answering your questions. Um, everyone Thank give you. a hand clap for <laughs> Dr. Tiziana. Thank you.